Hi, I'm Daryl Canada and I'm pretty excited about this new design putt-putt engine. For several years I've been trying to design a small, easy to build engine that has decent power, does not require any special tools or skills, and goes a long way towards solving the problems that the little commercial made in India engines have. This video will show you how to build it. As most people who have bought them know, these little commercially made engines run quite well and have a decent power to weight ratio. Unfortunately, they do have some problems. The diaphragms can crack or puncture very easily, and when they fail, they are almost impossible to repair satisfactorily. Except for the diaphragm, the components are all tin so they soon rust. The pipes often plug and the boiler sometimes becomes perforated. But the problem I hear about most is that the solder melts causing the engine to leak. This is usually operator caused by trying to add extra heat or improper filling that results in a dry boiler. This is what my engine looks like. It is very light in weight, rust proof, has good power for its size, is quite strong and durable and using the proper heat the solder will not melt unless allowed to run dry. It is easy to build with no special tools required and, as long as it does not leak, your first attempt should run fine, even if it comes out a bit on the ugly side. So let's start building. Cut two pieces of sheet brass to the dimensions shown. If your brass material comes with a curve in it because of being on a roll, position the pieces so they nest together with both curves facing the same way and front to back rather than side to side. You do not have to be exact in size. Close is good enough. The brass I buy is called shim stock and is .006 inches thick. It is often available at hobby shops, machine shops, or from engine builder or machine shop supply stores, and from metal supply stores. You may use other materials and other dimensions. Some may work okay, some will not. To shape the brass pieces for the tubes, I drilled two blocks of wood the same diameter as the tubes. I then heated the brass where the tubes will go to a bright red to anneal or soften them. This should stop the material from cracking when bending for the tubes. Using nails about the same diameter as the tubes sandwiched between the two pieces of brass, I clamped them all together in the vise. If you don't have a vise, hold firmly and tap together with a hammer. If it is not going easily, anneal again. When you come to solder the pieces together, a close fit is best, so a minimum amount of solder is used. Shaping for the tubes will usually add some curve at right angles to the original curve, so that the two pieces are a bit dish-shaped. This is good and what is wanted. You should now have two pieces that look about like this. Attaching the tubes is a lot easier if you solder short nipples in when soldering the two halves together. I usually make them one inch to one and a half inches long and one size smaller than the long tubes to be used. You can now tin both of the boiler halves. It is not necessary to have a space between the two halves, so I clamped them together in the center and started to solder the perimeter. To avoid wrinkles, I put a dot of solder at one point and then another 180 degrees opposite, and so on. When it all looked even, I completed the soldering by filling in the gaps. Be careful to keep the nipples in position when soldering. Now is a good time to pressure test what you have done. I used three tubes, 5 30 seconds outside diameter and 1 8 inside diameter by 6 inches long. These are thin wall brass that I buy at a hobby shop. They are made by K&S Engineering of Chicago and are available in many places around the world and online. Other tube materials may work, but I recommend staying very close to this ID and length. I chose to use three tubes. Two tubes will work also, though probably with less power. Four should also be okay. It is not necessary to do fancy bending on the tubes. They can in fact run without bends from inlet to outlet. 
It is important to have the inlet about one and a quarter inches above the outlet when installed in its running position, and the outlet is better if it is parallel to the water line. Tube depth when in the water should be about one quarter inch. In the previous photo, the boiler is bent up a bit too far at the front. In this photo, the large ball bearing indicates approximately where the lowest point of the boiler should be and the smaller ball bearing where the heat should be applied when your engine is positioned to run. For heat, I use a small wick burner using methyl hydrate for fuel. As methyl hydrate burns with a high heat, the wick was only about one sixteenth of an inch thick. It does not take much heat to run this engine. If you are experimenting with candles and you find one that keeps the engine running steadily, it is unlikely that adding more heat will make more power. And adding more heat means you risk melting the solder. I have built two of these engines for testing and installed them in boats. The green boat has the tubes running in a U-shape. This has the advantage of making the overall length of the engine much less. Neither of the boats in this video have rudders, nor are they tethered. Clearly the green boat needs a rudder as it consistently heads straight for the side of the pool. Towing another boat did not seem to slow it down. I hope you have fun with this build and will give me some feedback about how your engine turned out. This video assumes that you have some skills in metalwork and are building putt-putt boats and engines. More information on putt-putt boats can be found in my other videos and at the links in those videos. I appreciate all the viewer comments I have received and thank you for watching this video.